Hi everyone, I'm Blackie Wolf, and this is the video series where we walk through developing a form. In the previous episode, I finished up talking about the CSS development of the form by showing you a brief example of how you can style websites to fit mobile devices. In this episode, we're going to finally start some JavaScript, and what we're going to do is we're going to load each of these pages dynamically from the index page. And what I mean by that is, users are going to come to your site, and rather than loading this index page, and then loading this thread page, and this profile page and contact page, they're only going to load the index page, and then the, from the index page, you're going to load all the other pages and just swap out the content from the same page. We call websites like this single page applications, and the reasoning behind it is to reduce the loading of resources into your website. It's supposed to speed up page loading and also reduce bandwidth a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to do is create a pages directory. Then we want a JavaScript folder. I'll just call mine JS. And I'm actually going to go ahead and create a CSS folder while I'm at it. I'm going to move the CSS into the CSS folder. Come in here, update this. Okay, next we want to move all these HTML pages, except for the index HTML page, into the pages directory. Okay, next we want to come into the JavaScript folder and create a new file. Um, I'll just call mine pageloader.js. Go ahead and do that. Then come up here to the top. And below the links, we'll put script. Give it a source and link to that JavaScript file. And then we'll put defer on it. And the defer attribute is uh, kind of like, it basically kind of says, I want to defer loading this file until the rest of the page is loaded. Then I want to bring it in. And really what it does, I think it loads the file asynchronously while the page is loading. And then once the page is ready, it includes it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, uh, you can look it up. I can't remember. Because it's there's another attribute called async. And um, it's similar to defer, but it's a little bit different. And it has to do at which point the page loads in the JavaScript file. Sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay, we want to save. And then we want to come to the website real quick just to make sure everything isn't hasn't been destroyed. Okay. Next part's tricky. Uh, we're going to create a new file called forum.html. We're going to take everything in here. We're going to give this an ID of main forum. So we're going to take everything we've had in the main forum and put it right there. Next, we're going to come here and get rid of, oh, okay, I'm going to do that. Come into all these other HTML files, and we're going to get rid of the um, footer, header, and then the main tag. So if you have any tags with the wrapper on them, that tag and everything else in it, you want to keep. So let's go ahead and do this for all the other pages also. Okay, come back here, we reload it, and nothing's there anymore. Okay, so now what we want to do is come into this page loader.js file. First thing we're going to do is attach an event listener to the document object. This is a global object that's available in every single browser, and it represents the document that you're currently viewing in the web browser. It has information like HTML, CSS, events, and stuff like that in it. There's also another one called window, but anyways. So yeah, uh, come in here. We want to on DOM content loaded. We want to, oh yeah, uh, better not use ES6. This should be supported though. Let me check if that syntax is supported real quick.
Okay, looks like we can use arrow functions. They are supported in all major uh, browsers. That's great. I kind of like them. They're just a little bit shorthand, uh, especially when I don't need to use the this keyword. I use them. When I need to use it, you, of course, have to use the function notation. So, Okay, so we're going to specify a function called p load page. We're going to create a function called load page. It's going to accept a parameter called URL. No, it's going to accept a parameter called hash. And no, it's going to accept a parameter called page name. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to have a switch. And in the switch, we're going to pass the page name uh, to. Let me try something real quick. I do want some IntelliSense. Okay, so we're going to give it a default for now, and by default, what we're going to do is use fetch, which is different from Ajax. Well, it's kind of. It's the same idea, it's just, I think, better syntax. I could be wrong. We're going to use fetch to, uh, in the case that we don't have a page name that matches in the switch, we're going to go ahead and fetch... the in the form page and let's see this is a promise okay it looks like a sync function is are available this website is called can I use and it is super useful Basically, Edge, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, and Opera are essentially all that matter. The rest of these, uh, well, I mean, the rest of these kind of do, but not as much. Yeah, it's really just mainly these five. Because if it works in all these, it will probably work in those iOS, so iOS, Safari, and Chrome for Android, and Firefox for Android, and UC Browser for Android. So... Now that we've got that, we're going to make the function a sync. We're going to await the fetch. And actually, we really need to wrap these in a try catch. HTML so what we want is form data JSON I think it's just text once we have the result we need to get the main content element and actually we'll create another function down here called get main content dom which will return uh, document dot get element by id which was main I called it main content right I called it main form okay that needs to be main content Call the main content and we'll get the main content DOM. Once we have that, we'll set the inner HTML of this to the result. And for those of you not aware, in order to develop this properly, I'm having <clears throat> I'm having to use an extension called um, live server 
If you're using VS Code, I recommend you get it. This allows me to serve up a pseudo web page. And it, it basically, it treats it like I'm serving up the index file from a web server. And you may not be able to get the same result that we want to test for if you're just doing it based off the, if, like if you're just loading it from the file system. Um, and the, what I'm talking about is if you're developing localhost in your browser, the URL will look something like this. And if you're doing it from the file system, which I've been doing it up until this video, your web browser will show something like uh, C. Like that. So from now on, I'm going to be using this web server to develop stuff. So I really recommend you somehow get that set up. Okay, but now that we have this, let's come back here. Okay, and I, I forgot, let me think, promise. Okay, so the text method re returns a promise. And if you've never used the fetch method before, um, you have to await it, and it'll give you a response. But then if you actually want to read the response, you have to use one of these methods like this, and then you have to await that also because it is a promise. Okay, now that we have that, let's come back here. And we'll reload. Okay, so let's refresh and see what happens. Yeah, okay, so it, lo just, it just loaded the page dynamically. There are actually a few tricks we would do if we were using a real web server. Like in IIS, we could use URL rewrite. If it was Linux, or if, sorry, if it was Nginx, we would use a server rule. If it was Apache, we could use a .htaccess file. Because it's not, we're going to cheat a little bit, and we're going to do this instead. Let me add some documentation. Get in the habit of setting up comments for all your functions uh, because if you're not using TypeScript, at the very least, this will give you some intelligence for what you're doing. And one of the rules I follow for comments is I never go past 80 characters. I do go past 80 characters for the code because I don't really care as much, but for the comments, I try and keep it below 80 just to try and keep the documentation consistent. And then return. Excellent. Okay, so now we've got documentation. And uh, I just realized something. I want to make this a little bit more dynamic so it's easier to work with. We're actually, instead of using this function to load the pages, we're actually going to make the function load only the index page. Okay, so we don't need page name, which means we can get rid of the switch statement. And then we need to create a new function called enable page links. So let's do that real quick. And this will also get called on page load. So let's see, we'll load the index page. And then we'll enable page links. And so now, uh, let's first do the nav bar. We're going to give this a, we're going to use data attributes. We're going to give this, we're going to get rid of the ref attribute. And we're going to say data page. And in order for this to work, we are going to give it the name of the file we want to load. So let's do that real quick. Next, we want to come in here and we want to say document.query selector all. And we want to select all elements that have a data page attribute. And if pages and the pages dot length is greater than zero. We want to come in here and okay. And next we want to do for each uh, we'll get entry 
whoops, I mean page. So for each page we want to say, we want to set up a click. Each of these pages represents an element and it's actually referring to this um, anchor tag. So I want to say page dot uh, add event listener click. So when this page is clicked, we want to get the page name from the data property, and we can do that by saying page dot uh, data set. We want to say page dot data set uh, dot page, and then we want to once again <laughs> reset this back to the way it was. Um, we'll give it a param. Uh, with the type string, call it page, and come in here and change this into string template syntax because I think it looks cooler. You don't have to if you don't want to, that's perfectly fine. Come in here and pass in the page name. Okay, next we want to come back up here. And actually, that's fine. And we do want to change the name, though. We'll change it back to load page. So, see, I knew there was a reason I made it like that, and I couldn't, didn't know it till now. Next, we want to call that function. So we want to make this um, arrow function that we, or this click function we added to the page, we want to make that asynchronous. And then we want to do await load page page name and there's a really good chance this won't work uh, you remember me talking about using a uh, this live server extension to simulate a web server well I'm not sure that this is going to fly it might, but I might have to change it to that. And if you are not using a web server and um, you have it like that, well, it's actually going to go all the way back to the root directory of your drive on your if you're on Windows. Uh, so if you're on Windows, it'll go to C drive, and if you're on Linux, it'll go to the root. And Mac, same thing. It'll just go to the root directory of whatever drive you're currently on. I'll try it with the dots though first and we'll see. Okay, let's see what happens. At the very least, this should work for the about and contact pages. There's about and there's contact. Well, wow, I'm shocked that worked as as this. Oh, that's Google. I don't care about Google. Okay, so but yeah, it worked. But if you can see, um, we no longer have the pointer icon as our cursor so we need to fix that real quick and now it's pointing again so yeah next we need to do these threads uh, let's see if this works and it did work did it really work huh no, it did not. Why is that using thread one? Oh, whoops. Thread two. Thread two. Okay, so it did work. Next, we got to do these profile links. Okay, so let's see if it worked. Come here to thread. Okay, it goes to Albert. It goes to Ant Jr. Bernita and Trace Master. Okay, so it looks like it's working. Now, the reason I wanted to do this is because um, this way we only have to worry about our header and our footer in one file, and we can keep our main content in separate files. It kind of just makes it easier to manage. This way, we're not going back and forth between all the files just to add a script or add a link. It can all be added right here. 
However, we've created a problem at the same time. We can no longer use the back and forth buttons in the browser to uh, traverse the website pages. So in the next episode, I'm actually going to briefly explain how to use a local web development environment, which we can use to run a kind of pseudo web server like I'm doing with the VS Code plugin. And this will allow us to use URL rewriting so that we can properly traverse the navigation. So we will have to tweak our page loading a little bit. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave feedback, comment, critique. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.